I feel like I'm crooked. Why am I crooked? I guess my tripod made of Stephen King books is not uh, infallible. Hey guys, so I have a haul for you today from Stitching Bits and Bobs? Must be. Let's check. Stitching Bits and Bobs. Uh, I know, I know. Shh, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. Um, I bought two patterns, five specialty threads, one spool of Krennic, and a little stitching accessory. And if I say it on the video, then it has to be true. This might be my last haul for a little bit. I feel like I've been buying a lot lately in the last couple of months, partially because I was having a little rough patch for a while there, but um, in the back end of the year, my brain always goes into like makeup land because all of the um, holiday palettes come out. So I think I'm probably gonna be makeup obsessed for the rest of the year, at least until the friends and family sales are done. And then, oh, but I have to buy Christmas ornament stuff, so. Anyways, so I will show the two patterns I got first. One I mentioned in a previous haul, and one I did not mention. So the first one I got is um, Dust of Snow by Plum Street Samplers. So it says, The way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree, has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had rued. I just really like this little, this little lady in her little skirt. And uh, yeah, this was, this was fully an impulse an impulse buy. It's just a photo? There's just a photo stuck to the front of this pattern uh, of the finished piece. So this is Plum Street Samplers. As I mentioned, it's charted in needlepoint silks, but also DMC. So I will do the DMC. And, uh, and oh, this is a Robert Frost poem. I didn't know that until just now. So this is a Robert Frost poem, Dust of Snow, from Plum Street Samplers. So the second pattern I got, I mentioned in my last haul video, was on the way. I am pretty excited about it. It is the Ink Circles Little Alien Schoolgirl pattern. And it is a traditional, styled like a traditional sampler, but if a little alien girl did it. So there are spaceships and spacey buildings and an alphabet. Um, on the back, actually, it explains all of the little bits of this sampler, uh, which is pretty great. Um, this is charted in Weeks Dye Works or DMC. Uh, I think this is so cool. Ink Circles has become one of my favorite designers, I think. Just such cool ideas. Um, I did mention I was gonna make a change to this pattern, so the date is third era year 11462. That's fine, I'll probably keep that, but the name, the pun, um, amygdala, Amy G. Dalla, I think that's kind of cheesy. So I am gonna change that to the name of a character in one of my favorite books, and that book is The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. And if you haven't read this book and you like science fiction-y things, you should read it. It is a very quick read. Uh, it's not even really a novel. It's just a whole bunch of short stories that Ray Bradbury wrote over the span of like 20 or 30 years. And he has always been thematically really into like Americana, but also um, space travel and Mars and colonization and stuff like that. So a lot of his stories had these themes. So they just decided to publish them all, put them all in a certain order, all of these short stories, and then publish them as this book. So there aren't really any characters that like go through the whole book. It's not a novel at all. Um, he wrote a few little short, short, short stories to like tie stuff together, but it works really well as like a, a book about the colonization of Mars, essentially. Um, it has that funny science fiction-y thing 
where uh, the first story is set in 1999 and then it goes to 2026. But this was published in like starting in 1946 these stories were published so that was far enough into the future then. Um, yeah okay the character so um, yeah this book this book is so good and as I said one more short little thing about how it's just a bunch of short stories it's really easy to pick up and then put down it's not a, there's no chapters it's just you can pick it up and read like three short stories and then put it down for like two weeks <laughs> and then pick it up again um, it also has one of my favorite endings of like any book it's really great uh, but the story that I'm talking about that I'm going to incorporate into this sampler is the second story in the book. Um, it's also a standalone story. All of these stories are standalone stories. I have another uh, Ray Bradbury book. It's 100 of his most popular stories. And that's where I originally read this story about this Martian woman. And, and then it's also in the Martian Chronicles. So uh, the name that I'm gonna use instead of this name is Ia, uh, or that's how I've always pronounced it. It's one of those things, like remember in Harry Potter when nobody knew how to pronounce Hermione until the movies came out, or until I'm sure J.K. Rowling said something about it. Um, I've never heard this pronounced, this is always how I've said it in my head. Uh, Ia, Y-L-L-A is her name. And she's not given a last name in the book, really. Her and her husband, their last initial is K. Although that might be their last name because all of the other Martians in that short story, they all have last names that are just one letter. So her name is Ia K. And that is the name that I'm going to put on the Little Alien Schoolgirl sampler. Um, yeah, this book is really important to me. If you're not interested in reading it, I encourage you at least to just read that story. You can probably find it online. It's like 10 pages long. If I do find it online, I will link it for you to read, like a free copy of it. It's just, she becomes such a fully formed person, Martian, Martian to me. And I just enjoy that character so much. It's such an interesting story. And I just like the idea of kind of putting her in this sampler instead of having this cheesy pun in it. That's all I'm going to say about that. I really want to talk about that story. Like, I really want to tell you what the story is about, and, but people are not going to be interested in that, so I won't. Uh, but when I finish this, I might talk about it then, in that video. <laughs> um, the other thing I saw about this pattern online was someone, and I forget if it was just on a website or if it was in a comment, uh, they were going to buy the Glow in the Dark Krennix to use on this, and I love that idea. Um, there's not that many of them. There's like six maybe in these weird colors, and so I might, I might, I might think about doing that too. Just like incorporating them somewhere in here, just because that would be a cool like spacey touch. So that is Ink Circles, Little Alien Schoolgirl. I bought one lonely spool of Krennic because it was the color I was the most interested in. You know how they have those tiny little like swatches of the color and every once in a while there's one that I think looks really interesting and so I buy that one. I don't have anything to use this on but I just think it's really cool. Um, this is $32.50 and I should have looked up what the color was. Maybe I have the invoice here. I don't. Um, I think it's I think it's Amertrine or it's like a jewel tone. Ah, oh, whatever. I'll I'll put it down below if I find it. Uh, this is the number. The number four, and it is just a very cool like gold with a lot of interesting colors in it. I bought that for no reason, um, and then I bought five specialty threads from Carrie's Creation. This I think I've, I don't think you can buy these on 123 Stitch. I think they're only on Stitching Bits and Bobs from what I found. And they're a dollar. They're a dollar each. They're variegated cotton. And I just bought five colors that I thought were interesting. 
because a dollar. So the first one I'll show you is Coral Reef. And you get eight yards in each, it says at the bottom there. And there's a website for you too if you're interested in that. So this is Coral Reef. pinks and blues and there's a little weird bit of green in there that's interesting. Coral reef. This is Island Breeze and it is orange and lilac and turquoise. That's Island Breeze. This is Aurora. And this is typical, typical me, very soft. Um, like soft green, purple, and blue. That's Aurora. This one is Paradise. And it is like a rust color with some purple and some really vibrant blue. Paradise, and then the last one I got is my favorite. I saved my favorite until the end. And hilariously, it's called Prairie. Because I live on the prairies. <laughs> and it is green and blue and gold. Really pretty. So that's Prairie. And the last thing I bought is an accessory that I have seen on Stitching Bits and Bobs like every time it's jingly every time and um and every time I was always like do I need those no but I finally bought them it's the the slide top needle tins you get four of them and they all look very cute they all have that um a cameo they all have a cameo on the front um, I just put them back in here so you could see them. So this is $10 for four of them. And I will take out the three I have used. Three I have needles in, and one I don't have anything in yet. So what I did was on the top so it's a slide, it's a slide tin. So this is the lid of one of them. They just slide off um, like this. And I wrote in the lid what the needles were. So this one says B um, for my beading needles. This one is my 26. I don't want them to all fall out. <laughs> Needles. And then this one is my 28s. Um, I picked my favorite one for the 28s because I use 28s most often, despite the fact that I bend them recklessly. <laughs> They're probably too thin for, um, for most of what I stitch, but I just like them the best. So my 28s got my favorite my favorite one. So yeah, those are the slide top needle tins. I just think they're cute. And I always, before, I just had a bunch of packages and needles. I usually let myself have a new needle with every new project that I start. That's partially because it's kind of a treat, but mostly because, as I said, <laughs> I usually use 28s. And I by the end of the project, they're so bent that I just have to throw them away. <laughs> So those are the little needle tins you can get on Stitching Bits and Bobs. As I said, I still have one that's empty. And yeah, those are where my needles go now. So that is it for my haul. As I said, this is probably going to be, um, there's probably going to be a couple months here where I don't buy anything stitching related, mostly because I really, really don't need anything else at this point. And also, as I said at the beginning, my brain switches over to makeup at this point of the year because of all the like holiday collections that come out. Um, but I have to figure out something to do for Christmas cards this year or ornaments. I was thinking of maybe making those little sleds. Those are so cute. Um, so I might make a little ornament 
for my family members instead of a card and I'll have to buy those. So who knows what the future may hold. Uh, but anyways, that is all for a little while for stitching haul, I think. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.